congratulations firstly on re-signing. Can you just talk through that decision? Yeah, um, it was a pretty easy decision, I think. Um, obviously, my family and friends are from here, and um, I'm pretty settled in WA. I've been living here my whole life. Um, I've been in Perth since I was 17. Um, so it was, it was a really easy decision. Um, really happy with it. So. You still feel very lucky being picked up by WA Club because you didn't have to wait? Yeah, for sure. Um, I was open to go anywhere, but um, when my name got called out with the Freo Dockers, I was stoked. Um, I think it was obviously a boyhood dream to play AFL, and I think when you play footy in your home state, um, there's nothing better. Talk us the year at the start of the year, you were trying to get into the midfield, and now you look like a much more established part of it. Do you, do you feel like that? Yeah, um, I think after the round two game, like Ross and I had a pretty honest conversation um, about what my role was to be for the following weeks after that, and that was obviously the tagging role. Um, and I think you never sort of fully established in the midfield. Um, I always play better when I'm on the edge, and I think um, when you're on the edge, you sort of you know that you're not like a full-time player in the team. Um, I think anyone's really one or two bad games away from being out of the, out of the side. Um, so I think, um, yeah, with my role, I've grown into it, and um, I'm not... Certainly not comfortable, but I think more, just more natural. And I think, um, yeah, playing at AFL every every week is something that I'm getting used to. What well, was behind the move to half back? What did Ross say you Yeah, it was a bit of a balance with the team. Um, he wanted Lockie Wellow to go to the wing, and then Stephen Hill inside. So it was just a bit of a balance um, with the team. And um, he said to me, "If you want to be a good player, good players can play anywhere." And um, I sort of took it took it in my stride and thought, like, I want to be a good player and do the job well and do it, do it for the team. Um, I was open to it and um, just yeah took it took it straight away and I was like, let's do this and um, I was happy to do it. Yeah, you played well on the weekend. Do you see yourself stationed down there perhaps for the rest of the season, mate, just to learn that defensive craft as part of the back six? Yeah, not too sure. Um, I think I'll, I'll probably move from half-back into the midfield, mid, midfield to the half-back. Um, it's something that, yeah, you just add another string to your bow and... Um, yeah, I'm happy to play wherever wherever Ross wants me to play. I'll play. What was the mood like? Obviously, you know, devastating to lose the game on the weekend. But what was the mood like coming out, given how far you pushed the Cats with the inside? Yeah, um, obviously down in Geelong, and we had a young side. We had two debutants and one player with, with three games, another player with four games, something like that. And it's a whole group of us with less than 50 games. Um, I think it was something we were really proud of as a playing group, the way that we bounced back, especially after a few poor games against Brisbane and Adelaide and Collingwood. Um, I think it was an important, important time for us boys to stand up and make all the fans and supporters and um, everyone, all the sports staff, proud of the way that we play. Um, obviously, we were really disappointed with not getting the four points, but we took a real, real big step forward on the weekend with the way that we want to play. And I think. Um, the pressure now is for us to bring that every week. So if we can do that week in, week out, um, we'll definitely build towards something. Playing in these close games, I think it's been four pretty close games this year. <coughs> can that help fast track the young group, do you think? Yeah, for sure. I think um, as a young group, when you're under that sort of extreme pressure in the last quarter, um, you certainly grow as a player and you work out um, who can handle those big moments and who can't. Who can't sorry. Um, and I think a lot of us boys, um, especially that last play, like the way that Lucky well, I centred the ball and things like that. Um, it just shows a lot of composure with our young guys. Yeah, do you feel pretty comfortable now when the games are close that you know what your role is and what you should be doing at certain points of the game? Yeah, obviously in the last quarter, um, you're pretty fatigued and a lot of things come into it and the crowd's roaring and especially when you're away, they're roaring for the team that you're playing against. Um, but I think, yeah, the way that we've been exposed to a lot of close games this year, um, hopefully in the future will hold us in really good stead. Kind of the last time, in fact, the only time you played St Kilda was last year, I think, round 10. <clears throat> they, last quarter, eight goals to nothing. You got memories of that? Yeah, I, I actually remember the uh, quarter time spray that Ross gave us as a playing group um, against St Kilda. We sort of came out and weren't tackling and weren't providing the pressure that um, he wanted us to. But, um, yeah, they did get away from us in the last quarter. So I might, we might have a look at what happened um, last time against Saints, but especially because it happened... A year ago, um, a few things may have changed, but we might have a look at that. And what about them now? They they, they found form on the weekend, albeit that before that they've been struggling. What are you noticing about St Kilda? Have you done any personal due diligence on St Kilda's form yourself? 
No, I haven't really done a lot. Um, I think we focus a lot on Geelong after the bye um, because we played them earlier in the year. Um, so we'll definitely do our due diligence with um, looking at vision and things like that this week coming up. Anyone in the St Kilda team that you would like to play on? Um, no, not particularly, really. No? <laughs> you don't and no, that any, that? Anyone, yeah. There's, well, it's considering like what, what's happened recently with the change of role and going half back and tagging and playing midfield, um, I'm happy to do whatever Ross wants me to do. Is playing as a tagger good for your field, do you think, for that month or five weeks you do? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think it's, all, it's always good sort of nailing down it. <clears throat> down a roll, sorry, voice break. <laughs> um, <laughs> nailing down a roll and just having just full focus on, on that role. Um, I think it, it certainly did um, catapult my footy forward a fair bit, um, just with the, the importance of the role that everyone plays in the team. Um, I think it's important just to, for me to focus on that um, and then build on that and then whatever role I have from there, um, I'll know that I'll commit to it and do my best to fulfil it. What small things did you learn about playing midfield in that role when you're watching what other top players do? Yeah, obviously um, I came across a few, few players and they all had their strengths and weaknesses and um, just little things like being more focused on my transition and things like that um, obviously helps Like when you, when you have a good basis of a good defensive game, the ball winning and things like that come naturally. Everyone that plays in the midfield, they can win the ball, but whether or not you're good defensively is another thing. So um, I was able to build on that and then hopefully keep that with me for the rest of my career. Do you expect Nat Fife and Aaron Sandlands to play? You, you walk around them, you've seen them around the club. I know you're not going to name the team and you don't, wouldn't have yeah. any idea, but do you expect them to play? Uh, I'm not too sure, um, but obviously what we showed on the weekend was something that um, we can play really well without them. Like Shawnee Darcy obviously played a really good game and the midfield, they performed really well. Um, so it shows that um, whoever's playing for us, we can, we can bring it with the best of them. So yeah, I'm not too sure, sorry. Connor, that kick uh, in the last quarter you went across the defensive 50 metre arc to try and find Lockie Ross applauded yeah. you for that, although it didn't necessarily come off. Um, yep. is, that, is that good to hear that message, take the game on, even if you know, it doesn't come off when you make them stuff? Mm. Um, yeah, definitely. With Last time we played Geelong, um, they got they had a few um, plus ones behind the ball and we kept kicking it straight to them. So um, an emphasis for the game this week was to build the ball and um, take those risky kicks, kicks on and 45s and things like that. Um, so after I kicked it and they kicked a the goal, um, I got the message from the runner and I got a message from a lot of the boys as well. Like, just keep doing that. Um, don't worry about the end result. Like, we want to keep doing that. If we want to um, stay in this game and um, get back this lead or keep the lead, we've got to keep playing the way that we were playing the whole game. So you can't just go onto your shell, I feel, um, because then you just go backwards. So um, all the boys showed me great support and Ross was happy for it after the game. Can I ask you, a couple of weeks ago, West Coast said that they weren't, uh, in their own game, weren't sure how long there was left in the game. Brendan Goddard says the other day, said the other day he wasn't sure how long was left in the game. The other day, when you were playing Geelong, were you aware of how long you guys had to get the ball to the other end of the ground? No, you have no idea. Um, when that last play happened, I sort of thought, I didn't know how long was left. Could have been 15 seconds, could have been a minute. Um, so, yeah, you don't really know how long there is because obviously it's the count-up clock. Um, at, the, at the ground while everyone at home knows how long there is to go. So it's a bit of a tough one, but um, yeah, as I said before... So no word from the bench, no word from the runner, no one's, no one's, there's no team plan, where do we look, no message coming out at all? There's definitely a team plan, so if we're behind, there's a certain play, way that we want to play, and then if we're in front, there's a certain way that we want to play. Um, I personally didn't receive a message from a runner, but a runner does come out from time to time and tell you how long there is at the end of a quarter. Yeah, um, it was just protecting a cart that I got to my hand. Um, so it was something that the physio staff and I agreed on. Um, I think I'll wear it this week and then might keep wearing it for the rest of the year, but we'll see what happens. You liked playing it? Yeah, I loved it. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Really dumb question, but there's been a few so far from me. <coughs> Your hair, are you yeah. having haircuts at all? Have you got some... <laughs> <laughs> is there something going on? Have you got some, I've got to play five good games and we've got to win five in a row? Is there, yeah. is there anything relevant to the hair? No, I haven't um, had a haircut in over a year, so I'm, 
I haven't been a hairdresser in so long. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay. And, that's, and, and for what reason, can I ask? You just like it really long? Um, I don't know. I just there's, haven't there's, really nothing, there's nothing behind it. No, there's, there's nothing no, behind it. No, no, no. As long no. as you're playing, you just keep your yeah. hair long. Yeah, I don't really, don't really think about it too much, to be honest. <laughs>